downtown parking. Um, do we have too much parking? Uh, too little parking is almost always what we believe. You know, our downtown doesn't have enough parking. There's a parking shortage. We need to, we need to provide more parking. Um, or do we have too much parking? Okay. Let's look at that question. The first question um, should not be necessarily how do we provide more parking. The first question we have with parking as a problem is the question of what our, our community vision is. That's the question we have to start with because then we get different answers than an inappropriate first question of uh, how do we provide more parking. That's not the obvious first question if we perceive a parking problem or a parking shortage. We have to ask the right questions first. In this case, the first question that's appropriate is what is our community vision? Is this our vision? If so, then maybe it is true that we should just provide more parking. Okay? This is our vision. This is what we provide. Or what about this? If this is our vision, then maybe we have different things we should be doing in terms of uh, parking. Maybe it's not so much providing more parking. Maybe it's things like looking at the efficiency of the parking we have already. Almost all cities use parking inefficiently. They don't share it enough. They don't price it properly. Uh, there's too much free parking. Um, there's too much underpriced parking. And so the parking tends to be used inefficiently. It's not that there's, in a, there's insufficient parking. It's that the parking is inefficiently provided. And so oftentimes, you want to achieve the human, a high quality of life habitat. The strategy is not so much providing more parking. The strategy is let's use parking efficiently. The keys for a healthy downtown. There are a couple. First, Agglomeration economies, cities to be healthy need agglomeration. They need clustering. They need clumping. They need compactness. Uh, they thrive when there is more agglomerating, more businesses uh, closer together, more residences closer together. That's what makes downtowns healthy. Okay? To be competitive, downtowns need to leverage their strengths. The primary strength that downtown has, the competitive leverage downtown has over sub suburban America is compact, walkable charm. That's what the competitive leverage can be for a downtown. The downtown can always, well not always, but the downtown can successfully compete against the suburbs by leveraging compact walkability. It can never outcompete the suburbs on parking. It can never outcompete by providing more parking, more free parking than the suburbs. The suburbs are always going to win that competitive battle. It's always going to be a competitive mistake for downtowns to try to compete with suburbs on suburban terms. Downtown needs to compete based on its own terms. What ends up resulting uh, in consequence of this is, as I will often say, there is perhaps nothing more detrimental to a downtown than surface parking, especially free surface parking, off-street surface parking, that is. Um, nothing more deadly than that. Uh, the off-street surface parking uh, creates gap tooth dead zones in a downtown, and it really harms walkability, the, creative, the, the competitive leverage. It harms uh, walkability. Uh, it also really hurts agglomeration economies. To provide big surface parking lots means you're dispersing your downtown and really hurting downtown health. Big roads and big parking disperse downtowns. Okay, people can live further away. People want to live further away because you've got this more awful quality of life in your cities, and so people are dispersing. There's lower densities. Again, harmful for the health of downtown. Big roads and big parking disperse, causing real health problems for a downtown. Transit, attentive slow-speed roads, and efficient parking attract. They provide health to a downtown. They create agglomeration economies inherently. Okay? Transit attracts, compacts, infills, clusters, compacts. The downtown competitive leverage, a good visual example contrasting what I'm talking about. The competitive leverage is the image on the left. Okay? The compact, walkable, charming uh, kind of ambiance. The, uh, the image on the right is the suburban, plenty of free parking uh, design. Um, Downtown, the, the downtowns are never going to outcompete the big box retailer on provision of parking. Okay? Downtown competitive leverage is compact walkability. Keep that in mind when you talk about downtown parking needs. 
All right, tactics. What are the tactics regarding parking? First, minimize, as I just said, minimize the amount of off-street, especially free off-street parking you have in your cities, especially downtown. Downtown surface parking is deadly. On-street parking, by contrast, must be maximized. You must provide as much as you can. Okay? The on-street parking, <coughs> properly priced, is going to create, create um, a layer of protection for pedestrians. Therefore, it's a, a, a more safe, comfortable, pleasant place to be on the sidewalks. Uh, they slow down cars because they create more friction on streets. So cars are forced to drive more attentively and therefore safer. Um, retail is also very benefited by on-street parking because it's so easy and high quality to have on-street parking. People like the ability to run in and out of stores quickly, which on-street parking allows. Garages don't allow, or off-street surface parking lot doesn't really allow run in, run out uh, consumer activity the way that on-street parking does. So it's really helpful for, for smaller retail to have on-street parking. Donald Shute makes the point that you need to properly price your on-street parking so you achieve about 15% vacancy on an ongoing basis with your pricing. That's really important because you want to create the perception that there's available parking in your downtown. The biggest discouragement for motorists coming downtown is the perception there's no parking downtown. And so what, what Shoup recommends is that you maintain a perception there's available parking downtown. It's much more discouraging for a motorist to believe there's no parking downtown than to see the parking is priced with parking meters. Parking meters are less discouraging than the perception there's no parking. Okay, so parking meters uh, often are claimed to discourage motorists. I say motorists are much more discouraged by the perception of lack of parking. So motorist parking, on-street parking needs to be to create the perception of available parking. One real effective strategy is that downtowns are really benefited when cities own and operate uh, a downtown parking garage and uh, lease spaces in that garage. And by the way, uh, garages are really beneficial for parking in the sense that um, they really reduce the amount of the, build, the, the footprint taken up or consumed by parking. Parking consumes a lot of space. Parking garages reduce that footprint that's consumed by parking because it's vertically stacked. And so downtowns really benefit if parking has to be provided uh, by uh, having parking garages that stack the parking and therefore use less downtown space. Also very important that that garage be wrapped with active retail activity and residential activity so you have um, not a dead zone in your building, but a building that's active and alive. So you got to make sure that you wrap your parking with active uses. Okay. Also, what this does is that it allows the city to um, to uh, provide a lot of shared parking. People can lease spaces and not have to build their own spaces if they have a compact site. It's often going to be really costly for them to have to provide their own parking. This gives them an option to get the parking elsewhere instead of at their own site. Another great way, another way for uh, developers who don't have much in the way of space for, uh, for their downtown site is to pay a fee in lieu of the parking. Instead of providing the parking, they can provide a, they could pay a fee instead. That doubt, those revenues then go to the city government where the city government uses those dollars to build its, uh, its, uh, its municipal parking garages or whatever is being provided by, by local government in terms of parking as a way to mitigate for the developer not providing their own park parking. You have them pay a fee instead of forcing them to pay or having them provide what I'm calling detrimental uh, parking on their own site, reducing walkability. Really important tactic, when you have parking meters and getting parking revenue, parking meter revenue, it's really important tactically that the revenue be dedicated to downtown. Very often, the parking meter revenue is dispersed throughout the community. But if you dedicate it, as Donald Shoup would say, if you dedicate that revenue to downtown, you have a constituency of downtown businesses that say, yes, it's benefiting my business that this revenue is going to improve the streets and landscaping and the streetscaping near my business. You're fixing things, you're cleaning things with that revenue. I, therefore, are now increasingly supportive of these parking meters, and I want more parking meters for my business and near my business because I could see it's benefiting us and not everyone in the city. So tactically, it's real important for you if you want political support for parking meters, which I'm arguing are really important, 
that you make sure those revenues are dedicated to the downtown. Real important tactically to do that. You must exempt downtown parking for businesses. You must allow parking, you must allow businesses downtown to expand without having to provide more parking. Uh, I, co I uh, purposely provided this uh, illustration to, to give you a symbol of what America is doing to itself. This is one of the great historic sites in our history. This is the site where religious freedom documents were first signed in America. What is it today? What is one of the most important sites in American history today? A surface parking lot in Richmond, Virginia. What does that say about us? One of the most important sites in our history is now an asphalt parking lot. We really need to do what we can to have businesses, businesses downtown share their parking because oftentimes they stagger in terms of what their parking needs are throughout the day. The, uh, for example, a more obvious example is uh, downtown church. Downtown church often doesn't need parking during the week, uh, during the day. Uh, but downtown businesses often do. And so downtown nearby businesses should be able to share the parking with churches um, so that the parking is used more efficient, efficiently and not just used for the individual business itself. A lot of, a lot of businesses, like, like movie theaters, only need parking at night, usually. And therefore, they can be sharing those spaces with nearby businesses during the day. Sharing parking is real important for minimizing the amount of parking provided downtown. You must unbundle the price of parking from the price of the housing. Okay? We almost always insist that the price be bundled. That is, um, we provide housing and the parking is included in that price. We don't, give, we don't give people the choice of saying, you can have this housing unit for less money if you agree not to have parking or not to have two spaces. You only want one space. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna charge you less for this housing. We don't give you that choice usually. Instead, we say you must pay more for all this parking we provide. We're bundling the parking into the price of this housing. And so therefore, by bundling, we actually reduce housing affordability because the housing price includes that for the price of the housing. And it's much more progressive and much more in the way of uh, affordable housing provided if you unbundle. If you say your housing can be provided without the cost of the, of the parking, you can, you can have the option of not opting for the parking. So unbundling the parking is a very helpful tool, a uh, very effective way to reduce excessive amounts of parking that people sometimes, especially poor people, often don't need as much as more wealthy people. But why do we require uh, them to pay for that parking? What can downtowns that employ these tactics expect? First, revitalize an increased housing. Okay? You have more housing when you have better quality of life in your downtown because you've got less dead zones, less gap tooth dead zones with all the surface parking that you no longer provide and you've got better quality of life, therefore housing market is stronger in your downtown. It's a better place to be because you've got less asphalt lunar landscapes. You have improved retail because now it's less costly for you to have a retail shop. You don't have to provide as much parking, much less costly for you as a retailer if you don't have to provide as much parking. In fact, um, Shoup talks about how um, free parking is not really free. There's actually a high cost associated with free parking. The parking cost is often hidden in things like goods and services we buy. You know, the uh, space provided by the business uh, for parking is not free for that business person. It's uh, going to be charged to you when you go buy a product or buy a service from that business. They're charging you more because of the price they had to pay for the parking. They charge you less if they don't have to provide as much parking space. And as I just said, you have more affordable prices if you don't require so much parking on the part of businesses. Um, so again, the, the, the common question is how can we provide more parking? That's the common question we first ask when we think we have a parking problem. I'm making the point that no, our first question must be what is the downtown vision? Is, it what we want to, is our vision what's above or is our vision what's below? Our vis if our vision is what's below, which I think is commonly the case, we want to see that we use parking more efficiently.